Hi, I'm Dennis Gage. Welcome to my classic car. Well, this week we're out in the LA area to do one of my favorite things, and that's visit Jay Leno and see what he's got going. You know, Jay and I have become good friends over the years. We'll see what he's doing today. Hey, Jay, Jay, how you doing, man? I thought that door was locked. Oh, Donald, how that's, are you? It's, it's, it's Dennis. Dennis, yeah. Dennis, <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah, yeah always, always a pleasure, man, you know. I was, that was long. Yeah, no, it's okay. What's up? Uh, well, you know, I thought we'd see what you got going. I was thinking, you know, I'm, I'm feeling performance forward. Right, right, right. Yeah, well, I, I, I grew up in that whole total performance era of the 60s. That was, uh, you know, I was never a guy that really watched the Super Bowl or the World Series, but when Ford won Le Mans, you know, that three times, that was... That got your attention. That was a sporting <laughs> event for me. That was when, that was when uh, and those were the days, I think, when racing really sold cars. I mean, oh, yeah. You know, that race on Sunday, sell, sell on, on Monday. Monday kind of stuff. I don't know if that has quite the effect anymore. You know, modern... NASCAR and stuff, the cars don't really bear much resemblance to the no. car you would actually drive. But back in the day, they did. that big 427 Ford, that big Hemi Chrysler, those were the cars that you'd see win the race, and it looked just like your dad's car, except your dad's car had a 318 and four doors and, well, not, and not, an automatic transmission. But it was <laughs> but close it was, enough. It was close, it was well, close enough. And not, and not your dad's car, the one that you convinced him to, to, to buy, the 66 uh, uh, Galaxy. The Galaxy. The, the that, seven that, that, was yeah. that, that was close. That was close. That was close, yeah. That was close. Now, we did that earlier when that was in process, and you're, you're getting close to being done with The car's that. almost finished. In fact, I'll show it to you a little bit later, okay. but I've got a Ford here I think you might find interesting. Uh, you know, back in the late 80s, there wasn't much happening performance-wise. No. Corvettes were not much horsepower. Uh, Mustangs, the, the, the V6, I mean, there wasn't much. I mean, there was, there was a little bit. So a guy named uh, Chuck Beck and Rick Titus, they created a car called the Shogun. And what it is, is they took a Ford Festiva, or Fiesta, whatever you want to call it, and uh, they took, you take out the four-cylinder engine, you throw it away, and you put that V6 from the show, from the Taurus show. Which is an unbelievable engine. Right, in the back. It's a great engine uh, done by Yamaha. Well, here it is right here. Well, let's this look is at the show. I mean, I saw you roll into a show in this about 10 years ago. Yeah. And for, my first thought was, you're driving a Fiesta, you know? Yeah, and then, yeah. And then I looked closer and I went, oh my God, this is completely insane. Yeah, it's, it's a well-done package. Uh, uh, I've had this car almost 20 years. First thing you do is, let me show you here, you... This is where the four-cylinder engine normally would go. It's a bit dirty because I use this car a lot. It's got a fuel cell right here, so in... And, and this obviously. is, a, this is the, the, the intake for the cooling. The scoop right. is obviously functional. Right, it gets all the hot air out. This is your radiator here, electric fan, of course shock towers, your engine normally would go there. Let's go to the back of the car where it gets a little more interesting. What you do is, as I said, you take the engine out of the Taurus show and you put the whole drivetrain, instead of driving the front wheels of a Taurus, it now drives the rear wheels of this. But there it is right there. And uh, the nice thing is this engine is totally stock. It passes yeah. emissions and everything. Uh, you've lost about a hundred, about a thousand pounds of weight from the big Taurus it was in when you put it in this. So 220 horsepower is pretty lively, and with the nitrous, it might bring you up yeah. momentarily to And that's a, a dual overhead cam, 24 valves. Oh, it uh, is a wonderful motor. And you know, it's so funny today, nowadays people go, oh, your car has 60,000 miles, get rid of 80,000 miles. These engines will run 200, 300,000 miles. 200 easy, miles. Yeah. yeah. I mean, th th this myth that you have to get rid of a car when it hits 100,000 miles in America, the value of it goes way down. I mean, it goes down substantially, but it shouldn't go down that much. Yeah. It's got Boyd wheels on it. I haven't cleaned it up. I didn't know we were going to take this one today. But uh, we can take it out. And you've got uh, air conditioning and all that kind of stuff. And it's a sleeper. You know, nobody oh. really knows what it is. Occasionally, I'll be in traffic, and kids go, hey, you've got your big wheels on the back, you moron. It's front wheel drive. OK. And then you blow their doors <laughs> off. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. But by 2010 standards, it's not as fast as a lot of cars are out there now, but in the late 80s when I got this thing, there, there was no car in this class with 220 horsepower. It was just not, not very Well, and is it, I mean, is this, a, is it actually a roll cage? Or oh, that's a roll cage. Yeah, we put a roll cage in there, so. And they made, they made six of these? Yeah, they only built six of them. I think these cars were about $33,000, $34,000 in 88, which was just about Corvette territory. Yeah, so. yeah. You'd have to be an idiot to buy this <laughs> instead of a Corvette. But being president of the More Money Than Brains Club, I chose it. And chose you know, I love it. I mean, I, I think it's a fantastic car. It's just, you know, it's just one of those, uh, you might know Chuck Beck. He does the Beck Spider. Yeah, he mm -hmm. does, he has a very successful company. He does a version of the Scarab. 
he's really good at recreating cars in the period and making them, uh, you know, engineering-wise. They're not just kit cars. They're, they're real cars. And this is a real car. I mean, I've never had any problem with it. Everything is Ford. You yeah. can take it to a dealer to a dealer if you need to and fix it. You know, all the wiring, harness, everything is, is Ford uh, torque. Is, is that a, a Fiesta Festiva interior, or, is, or they, they tricked that up a little now bit? Now we too? upgraded that a little bit. Yeah, a little better. Yeah, pro car. A little, little better seats and a few other things. And of course, it's no longer a four-seater. It's a two-seater. And, and your spare is right here. Right, and you got all kinds of room. You got your spare tire back there. But uh, we should take it out for a second. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm all for it. Let's, uh, let's do that. Cool. Welcome back to My Classic Car. The fun thing about this car, you know, it's got a nice sound, and it does. you know, it's the kind of car you can park on the street, and I'll let you know what it is. It's not like parking a Ferrari where people are gonna go, I'm gonna mess with it. It just looks like a little Festiva that, you know. Yeah, with with some plastic on it. I feel like I've armed my teenage son's car. You know? <laughs> well, these engines are interesting because at 4,000 RPMs, they come alive. Right. Well, we'll find out. I just love this engine. Yeah, it's a wonderful motor. I'm gonna let Dennis take the wheel. This is a huge mistake to let Dennis take the wheel. Hey! <laughs> Three liter engine, 220 horse. In the old days, you could take a, an engine and hop it up and it would actually be better. And with electronics, there aren't very many engines that you can make better than they come from the factory, especially high performance engines. I mean, some you can. So the key is to go the other direction. Keep the horsepower, but try to lower the weight so you get the power to weight ratio up. You know, a lot of times in traffic, people ask me, hey, is that front wheel drive? You could tell them it's rear wheel drive, or you could just show them. Uh, yeah, I think it's rear wheel drive, uh, rear wheel drive. What, what do you say we go check out some big body Ford performance? Sounds good to me. All right. Welcome back to My Classic Car. Now, you remember when you were here last time, I, we talked about my Ford 7 liter, and yes. I told you how I, how I made my dad buy the car. Well, here, here's, a, here, here's, here's that story. Take a look. <laughs> well, gee, I don't know. Come on, Pop, let's order a car. All right, great. My mom was there. Now, I kind of knew what I wanted. <laughs> so we sit down, and my father said, well, let's order the car. Uh, Burgundy, that's fine. I said, can I pick the engine? My father said, well, I remember my mother went, oh, let the boy pick <laughs> the, <laughs> the engine. Let, let, let the boy pick the engine. <laughs> difference does it make? So I said to the guy, well, here's what we want. And I pulled him and said, we want the 428 with the police pursuit package. We want the muffler delete option. You know, we want the 390 gears. Blah, 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 blah. I couldn't get my dad to get the stick. So he got the C6 automatic. So anyway, this is all done. You and my father looking around. What's he taking so long? I'll be right there, Pop. And just talking to the salesman. You know, I'm checking all the boxes. <laughs> you know, so, so then the car comes into the dealership. You know, my dad's like, come on, let's go pick up the new car. So anyway, my dad gets in, he turns the key, and he goes, run, down, run, run, run. <laughs> My father goes, there's a hole in a muffler. That's a brand new car, there's a hole in a muffler. I'm not picking up the thing. So I go, oh no, Miss Leonard, you check muffler delete. What, the, what do you mean muffler only? Who would do that? You, what you see, head would do that? <laughs> glass packs, muffler delete option. So my father's really mad. So we're sitting there in the dealership, and it's got the white floors, and my father says, oh, oh, oh God, six, you know. And he takes it, he puts it in gear, and he's, he's just mad, and he steps on the car, and goes, yes! <laughs> He goes, Dick, that's a rocket ship. It's a rocket ship. You made me buy. Now he's just screaming me all the way home. What the hell did you make me buy? He just yelling at me, Pop, I just checked the motor. You know? Well, and now we're back. <laughs> now we're back, and the car is finished. As you can see, uh, underneath it doesn't bear a whole lot of resemblance to a 66 Galaxy. John Hotchkiss of Hotchkiss uh, Sports Suspension, he did this suspension for us. We put Willwood disc brakes all the way around. As you can see, it's all clean under here. Uh, good trying, six speed uh, transmission. Well, here, let's bring it down. And it came out really nice. I mean, it was, uh, it was, had a ways to go when we were here last time. Well, you know what's interesting? To me, 1932 and 1966 are my two favorite years for car styling. 32 was the middle of the Depression. 
and they had to do whatever they had to whatever they had to do to get people's imagination going V sixteen yeah, and yeah, flowing yeah. lines Crazy and stuff. cars nobody could ever really afford, but they made oh. dream cars. And sixty six in America was the last year you could style whatever you want without regard to safety or anything else. <laughs> and that's what I like about this. There is there's nothing safety about this car at all, really. <laughs> I mean, it had four-way flashers, and that was about the only option. <laughs> but I just like that cool fastback styling. And this was a one-year-only option, the 66 model Ford 7-liter. It was meant to compete with the 2 Plus 2 Catalina, the yeah. Grand Prix. These were big personal luxury cars. Full, you know? full body muscle. Yeah, the GTO was for the younger guy. This was for the upscale guy that wanted to move a little quicker. And now the, the Roush engine? Is is all aluminum. This, I mean, it's a it's an FE block, but it's right. recast. Right. Is that the deal? Five hundred eleven cubic inches. You know, crate motors are kind of the way to go these days, and and they and they last forever. They're good mm -hmm. for a couple of hundred thousand. Well, and they miles. come already. They're going to meet specs, and they're you right. Know, they're they meet do specs. With, you put it in, and you go. Yeah. And we've got four elevens in this. We just put four elevens in it, and uh, with a six speed, so we get reasonable gas mileage. But real performance. Real I mean, performance. yeah, it's 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 a fast car. Love what you you did with the interior, because I mean, I guess that's a stock pattern, kind of, right? Right, right. But it's, it's all leather pattern. now. But it's all well, it was leather. It just but wasn't, it wasn't this, this quality wasn't of leather. Nice leather. Yeah, and it's got the four-speed knob in it. It's actually a six-speed, and uh, well, we should take it out. Oh, we should does. definitely take it out. Fire this baby up. Welcome back to my classic car. Let's take it for a spin. See you later. Dropping down into six, you're turning barely 2,580. Now I imagine it's a, a lot lighter engine than the, the old. It is a lot lighter. Yeah, I think the whole car is probably yeah, maybe a couple hundred pounds lighter. It's such a great looking front end on this car. Yeah, I like it. It's it's it looks like an American car. Oh, there's know? no mistaking that. A lot of American cars don't look like American cars anymore. You know, I see some of them and. I go, is that a Nissan? Is that a... Ma no, no. The, yeah. You know, a Toronado looks like an American car. A Buick Riviera, a 2 Plus 2 Pontiac Catalina. They all look yeah. like Unmistakable. American cars. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Dad would have been when I had this car. car. So it really is nostalgic. <laughs> See you later. We're out of here. 